Welcome to Sword Box Ministries. Mickey continues with part 2, on truth. Our verse for the day is Ephesians 4.21. If indeed you have heard him, and have been taught by him, as the truth is in Jesus. Well, welcome back. I always wanted to speak to a large auditorium of college students, and so I can pretend that's what I'm doing today. Uh, you know, we've been talking about truth as it relates, uh, in particularly to the, the single person, the young person going off to school, uh, who may experience many auditoriums just like this, where professors may get up and speak, and try to convey to you their philosophy, uh, their views. <clears throat> you know, if we're not reading God's Word, we are leaving ourselves open to be deceived by smooth words and ungodly opinions and views. People will tell you to just follow your heart, but God's Word says that the heart is deceitful above all things and desperately wicked, Jeremiah 17, 9. If we just follow our hearts without God's Holy Spirit giving us direction, understanding, and wisdom through His Word, we will be deceived and we won't follow Christ. <clears throat> Proverbs 23, 12 tells us to apply our hearts to instruction and your ears to words of knowledge. But we get that from God's Word. You know, His Word is absolute truth and our final authority for life. So, you know, as we talked about yesterday, we have Christians who are not reading God's counsel, a lost world being swayed by Satan and challenging all truth, changing laws to reflect a lack of morality and becoming more and more hostile and intolerant of Christians and truth. These are very dangerous times. The Bible tells us that deceptions are what Satan uses to get us to do his bidding and to sway the world. It started with Eve in the garden and it continues today. The Bible says there is no truth in him. None. You know, in order for the devil to deceive us, he has gone to work in this country using a very small percentage of people to attack truth by removing it. It started back with prayer in the Bible, reading take, being taken out of schools, and it's continued today at a pace that is very alarming. You know, uh, pretty soon if we continue at this pace, there will be no sign of Christianity anywhere in public views, and laws will become more and more hostile and restrictive to Christians. You know, when there's no truth, it's easy to deceive people. Each time truth is removed, lies replace it. It's gradual, and yet it picks up steam as it goes. And now we're seeing in this country a very rapid change in culture. What's good, what's bad, what's truth, what's accepted, all out of tech on Christian values. Eventually we end up in what is described in Isaiah 59 4. No one calls for justice, nor does anyone plead for truth. They trust in empty words and speak lies. They conceive evil and bring forth iniquity. Case in point would be this thought of separation of church and state that we've all heard over and over. I mean, the news media, the ACLU, and many others have mentioned this and used it so often that people now believe, even very educated people, believe that it's part of our Constitution. I got news for you. It's not in our Constitution. Nowhere where you'll find it. What is in our Constitution is the First Amendment. And it's not, as President Obama and Hillary Clinton has said, that it's our freedom of worship. No, no, no. It is the free exercise of religion. And there's a big difference. But as you can see, people use subtle words. It sounds good, but we must be aware of the attacks on our freedom as they will affect our rights to speak and live out truth in this country. As Christians, our worship is our life, how we live, what we say. It's not just worship on Sunday behind closed doors. So we have to be aware of what's going on around us, that America is and has been under attack in regards to suppressing truth, as is evident by our continual moral decline and removal of Christian symbols, practices, and rights in our culture. What's the result? Well, Isaiah 57, 14 says, Justice is turned back and righteousness stands afar off for truth has fallen in the street and equity cannot enter so truth fails and he who departs from evil makes himself a prey without truth there can be no justice no righteousness and no equity liberty and justice for all not without truth you know we can't even get truth from our news media these days those who are supposed to report truth yet more and more they twist they spin they omit and they give us their own views and opinions of news filtered through their own agendas. It's getting more and more difficult to find out truth in this world. 
But the good news for us is that God's truth never changes. He is the same yesterday, today, and forever. You know, there's no book anywhere on this planet, or ever has been, even close to the Holy Bible. That's because God wrote it. Yes, there's difficult passages to understand. There's time and cultural differences that are difficult for us to relate to. And God's Word convicts us. It reproves us. But God's Word is truth. You know, Jesus was praying just before he was arrested in John 17, 17. And he prayed this. He said, Sanctify them by your truth. Your Word is truth. I hope you will pick up a Bible today. They're not hard to find. They're everywhere. I hope you will prayerfully ask God to give you the discipline and the heart and the passion and the desire to be in His Word each and every day. Because you know what? God will change your life as you begin to spend time with Him in His Word. God bless you. We're going to talk a little bit more about this tomorrow. I hope you join, join us here at Swordbox.